Good appropriate time of the day to you, friends and enemies. I am Richard, and this whole thing around here is LMTDTMFFR, or is it with me now? Limited time offer, no vowels. And how are you all doing today? As you can hear from that, Vampire has just kicked in. Let's turn that off for just a second while I talk to you. How are you all doing? I'm doing well. I hope you have had as uneventful a time as I have had since we last spoke. I haven't really done anything exciting. I watched a couple of streams I was uh, interested in watching. I think that's about been about the highlight of my time this weekend. Yeah, can't have it all. Hey, can't be go, go, go all the time. And with that, let's switch over to the game that, oh yes, I have not even prepped for that, have I? Yoink. Are you going to pop up now? Yeah, and there you are in the top corner. Well, let's see if we can remember what we had done. I think we kicked our partner out who was trying to live vicariously and be us, if I remember correctly. And I'll turn on the game sound. There we go. And we were still investigating the murder and I don't think we were any closer to actually working out who did it. Because it's been a while since we've been able to get back on here, or since I've been able to stream this. So let's load it on up. Night 8 find out what's going on. Can we go there? We need to rest. Alright. I could have looked at the things and seen what it said. We'll do that in a second and find out what's going on. For me, it always starts with an image. Uh, no, that's our dictionary. We don't care about the dictionary. It was just looking to see what had happened. Ah, these are our traits. All right. So we're low to the end because we sided with the Camarilla, even at the expense of everything else. Glass half empty. I'm obviously pessimistic about something. Well, abuse of power never hurt anybody. Well, that really goes with the Camarilla side, doesn't it? Honesty is the best policy. Okay, so we were bluntly honest with somebody. And the ends justify the means. Uh, so we'll just be kicking in the doors and taking names that's not exactly what that means but hey there we go alright for me it always starts with an image uh, we were learning to use our powers more weren't we they were dragging us to the places and letting us see things that we didn't necessarily know we needed to see or know how to find and get there. An image which might be vaguely eerie or interesting, but usually not an image that would provoke particularly strong feelings by itself. Usually it hides a mystery. That much is correct. But that mystery doesn't exist without a text. Or more specifically, a context. Context is everything. One way or another, you need to process what you're looking at. Maybe that context will be something you've heard or overheard. Maybe, although it's quite rare and pretty special, it will be your very own creative, captivating, complete interpretation. A ghost of an idea. Not a regular ghost, you understand. A ghost of an idea. Is this a half-forgotten memory of something unspeakably beautiful I will never ever see again? Just a scene from a movie? A fragment of a music video? An animation? Or maybe this really is the last thing Calhoun never saw in his own life. Worn sunbeams caressing his skin and turning into ash. A giant ball of fire engulfing his body in flame from 93 million miles away. Was he terrified? Was he grateful? There's no will, no suicide note, no nothing. Instead, we can only count on what the local historians will write. Presumably, 
in their bias bias biases shape the narrative one way or another I know you can be biased is it biases is biases what am I looking at here oh well this is a scene of Delia putting on you the makeup on you a horrible laughable hall of mirrors a creep whom I never ever want to see again a vampire much more despicable than myself yeah because she was using you up trying to be you sucking all of the essence of you out in order to make herself in your image just because that's how she sustains herself how she lives with what she is and nothing there are a lot of people like that in the world and it's unfortunate that they've never been able to form their own basis of personality but hey not everybody has a I was going to say normal childhood, but that's not what I mean. A, a childhood that allows you to form your own personality and you're not molded by somebody else. Or maybe someone who loved taking care of me and deserved to be cared for in return. Could be that person. Funny thing, whenever I was high as a kite, mentally lost in dimensions parallel to ours, she was my anchor. I shared history. My feelings for her were an anchor. Matthew McConaughey, returning to his estranged daughter from the other side of the cosmos, from beyond the event horizon, guided by nothing but love. That is a shitty film. Do not see it. When you break it down and analyse what is actually going on in the film, it's not worth your time. Then, Whenever I get back to planet Earth, for a week or two, I was haunted by the memory of that affection. I was the best possible version of myself toward her. But that haunting always refused to transfigure into something real. What gradually took its place were angry, disappointed thoughts. And among them, one thought that I was always trying to suppress. I need someone who'd know how to raise me up spiritually. But all I have is a sycophant who's always working her ass off to lift me up without understanding what I need. It's hurting both of us. Having these words pop into my head hurt me. Because they had the ring of truth to them. And also because I knew there must be another narrative. A better narrative. I was just too stupid to find it. Story of my life. Story of my own life. I still have no idea what to think about this city. I had my the best city in the world phase. I had a just a playground for wealthy fucktards phase. Now I'm in search of a better description. One day, probably, I will stumble upon like a piece of writing or a prestigious TV show scene that will contain just that and suddenly I will look at this place with new eyes. Or maybe I won't. It's like the frustrations I had when I was back at Lodestar. All these words constantly trailing behind reality, tapping you in, trapping you into a useless mindset instead of bringing enlightenment. Fuck all those flashy writers whose main concern is furthering their own brand. Douchebags who present you with limited, pathetic, depressing realities when they are kings. Fuck them all to hell. Yeah, stupid people putting themselves out there on the internet, presenting a face to people while they show off these small little realities that they've maybe invested time in, maybe not, that they're all there. Oh my god, how horrible that must be. We need words that will paint a brighter future before our eyes. But what if that can't be done without reinterpreting the past? What if we haven't even defined the ills and threats correctly? Once again, my retort thoughts return to the same visual that has been tormenting me for almost every waking moment of this past week. Yep, Calhoun's dead body in this place. If 
I remember correctly, the shadows were jammed open so that he burned to death. A senseless demise devoid of any context. Crime scene stripped of evidence. An image created by an unknown artist. Designed to leave you dumbfounded. The investigation is over. All the possible avenues explored. All the non-testimonies are in. No concrete evidence found. The play is almost complete. The actor's ready to leave the stage. Well, that would be disappointing for us because I'm not sure I have another game ready to play. It is what it is. Exactly. I failed as a detective. Maybe through no fault of my own, but again, it is what it is. This case, this scene, this picture, never needed an investigator. What I understand, all the people in charge ever wanted was a talented writer. Somebody who could write the narrative for them that they wanted, and paint it with enough evidence, description, that nobody else would question it. Sounds about right. Hmm. What if... A ghost of an idea. When I wake up, Dakota is still not here. Dakota, not Delia. Yeah, there we go. I don't know how to feel about that. So I just... Don't... I don't feel. I shut it off. Close off my emotions for another time. So they'll explode out later. Kadir hasn't left any messages by the door. Still that mad, huh? Oh, that was when we beat up the old man in the car who was going to take us to our final death. So I'm glad we did that. It will probably appeal to the court to take me off the case, and if half of the garbage Ke Kaiser was spouting is correct, he shouldn't have much trouble convincing everyone. Here we are, that's us. Hey, Julia. What can we do? I look in the mirror and stare at my warped non-reflection. This place is upsetting. You need a change of scenery, girl. The depressing streets of a locked down New York City will do. I think of God. Maybe that's why I half consciously pick the cathedral as my destination. I think of the silver cross adorning my chest. An empty signifier. Whenever somebody asks me why I wear it, they hear a different story. I think of these silhouettes that I keep spotting from the corner of my eye. Oh, I don't even imagine what that means. I feel what it means. It makes me nauseous enough. I mean, if they are the ghosts of people who have gone before, or the souls, and they are trapped here on Earth, yeah. Whatever. I think of my clan, so closely tied to the Catholic Church. It's a loveless marriage so to speak. Like, for example, the one between my parents. Yeah, I seem to remember she was... His, her father had cancer and abusive, and was abusive and her mother wouldn't leave. That was what happened at the beginning, something like that. Think about the great irony of the Lambrasco truce. La Sombra truce, with the Holy Sea. Oh, the Holy Sea, yes, of course. We are the only ones who stay so close to the Lord's light, even though we are certain we will never, ever reach it. Some of us shadows have visions. Visions of comrades who departed this world recently, travelling through some abstract space. One that's disturbing and astonishing, in equal measure. They almost reach whatever afterlife there is for our kind, and then get caught and consumed by a dark, monstrous silhouette. The rumour is our antediluvian wasn't stopped by his final death. He's still out there, behind the shadows, taking revenge for our patricide, feeding us like Saturn, devouring his children. And you're going to show us antediluvian, which means forefather? Yeah, the forebearers of every kindred belonging to the 13 vampire clans. These vicious bastards in the third generation created the world as we know it. Some features of our blood are said to have originated with them. Thanks for cutting me out of the internet, you Mesopotamian dickweed, is what I'd say if I didn't have a premonition we might see each other again someday, somehow. I see that. 
As Dakota would say, it might not be factual, but it is an emotional truth. From joining the Camarilla to panically scrambling for any safe house, it's like our elders are solely motivated by fear. Sins of our father are catching up with them. Uh, it's a young kindred like me who are given the responsibility to clean up their messes with the constant scent of doom looming over the horizon. Hmm. Thinks of world. Thinks of how met this is metaphor for current world situation with, say, global warming. We don't talk about salvation anymore. We've just minimized the impact of damnation. That's no way to live. Uh, again, maybe that's why they call it unlife. Shit. It's been a while. Hello there, hello sheep. I'll have you know this shepherd was extraordinarily patient in waiting for you. What are you doing here while the night is so young? Out for blood? Well, you're in luck. This place offers both the body and blood. Yes, yes. I can't remember which vampire clan you belong to, but it's not my one. And just hanging around here trying to be all suave and mysterious. If missionaries learned their methods from pickup artists, they would all be like this guy. I'm not in the mood, you sorry ass bum. Step the fuck away from me, or you're gonna be sorry. Oh my, something troubling you. If so, I can arrange a confession. Or, if you're in a hurry, keep in mind the path from inner, to, uh, inner turmoil begins with a friendly air. And I've got one right here. I ripped it from my latest victim! Ha 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 ha! he would never do that. Kurja to Anatolja. I don't know what that means, but you want me to fuck you up, don't you? Don't you? I know what fuck you up means. I assume there that is some swearing in a language I do not understand? Julia, as you should know by now, I'm always... I'll always interpret this kind of response to preaching the divine as the devil stirring inside you. Is that what it is, Julia? The liar and the father of lies got a hold of your soul? If so, give me a signal. Even the smallest one. I'll do my best to swat it. What is the opposite of an exorcism? A devil telling an exorcist to get out of the fucking child. Something swells up inside my chest. I recognize the feeling. The handbrake just broke, and I'm definitely not on level ground. Fuck. Here we go. Listen, I've had enough for it. Enough! Enough of your sanctimonious attitude. Enough of your brazen lack of basic empathy. Enough of your dumb, ugly, fucking mock. You're a fucking singularity of stupidity, tastelessness, and cringe. I've met all sorts of horrible shitheads and arsons this week. And somehow, none of them, none of them got under my skin the way you do. You motherfucker. Like a goddamn Jehovah's Witness, going from door to door, except you're always knocking on my fucking skull, going, hey, do you know God exists? Have you heard that God exists? Like, <sighs> hold on, hold it right there. When did I ever say that God exists? Yeah. What? I said, what makes you believe, what makes you think I believe God exists? Well, you're always talking about the devil. Oh, now you're just fucking with me. No, uh, I'm serious. Well, he sounds serious, at least. I'm actually speechless. I think there's been some sort of silly misunderstanding that desperately needs to be cleared up. Um, all ears? I sure hope so, Julia. I feel like you must have ignored half of what I've been saying for you to reach these conclusions. Wow, you are a manipulative bastard. And um, yeah, we're done. Yeah, it's very well possible, actually. It usually takes 15 seconds of him talking to get me to completely zone out. I, 
I don't know. I don't know. So, to avoid any further mix-up, I will go back to the beginning and explain the core of my religious beliefs. Okay. No. Nope. No. Hmm. I love the Catholic imagery. I cherish the tradition and law. I adore the practices and the intricacies of the theology. The messages contained in the Bible. Of course I do. Well, you are fucked up, sir. If you do not... I've heard it said before, and I'm going to repeat it as a phrase. The best way to get anybody to deconvert from Christianity is to read the Bible. There's a lot of fucked up stuff in there that their that God, their God, explicitly sanctions. And at no point does he say, "Hey." That stuff that I'm mentioning and explicitly sanctioned before, they don't sanction it now. There's no point where they say that. Why well, I said he. We don't even know that it's a he. Don't even believe it's there. But anyway. Does that mean I believe that one day I will see the big dead in the sky? Forgive me, Lord, but I don't think so. Doesn't sound very likely. Especially for a bloodthirsty creature of the night. I mean, I don't know that that's true if you believe you were created in his, in his image and that everything then everything that you do is the thing that he would do if he was in your exact position and had the subset of your knowledge and only your knowledge so that's what this is about fun imagery that's oversimplifying things but yes I suppose you could say that Motherfucker, you ain't Catholic, you're just a weirdo cosplayer. Says a non-practitioner who still wears a cross. Yeah, but I don't shove it down people's throats for fun in my spare time. I'm simply trying to share the joys religion has brought to my own life with others. No, you you are oh you are pushing it further than that. You are You are to coin it, to use a phrase, a rabid fanboy. Someone who is far too enthusiastic over this. Who makes it their whole core. What joys? Oh, where to start? When there are so many. The joy of having plainly understandable rules to follow. The joy of having a structure to your life. The joy of always knowing where to find people who share your values. But they don't. They don't. They... Alright, fine. Above all, it's the joys of being an aristocracy. Surrounding ourselves with exquisite, luxurious architecture, beautiful, classical music, right rituals formalizing our actions and relationships. A pursuit of virtue, separating you from the masses, the hierarchy, the hierarchies, the communities. All serving an idea greater than themselves. It's like monarchy or some Camarilla traditions, but not as gauche. So that's what it was. You saw pretty paintings and buildings and thought, hell yeah, I want in. And then you just decided what they mean to you? Oh, don't get me wrong. It's real faith that brought me to the fold. Eventually, I whittled down this religion to its core. To what interests me? I mean, you are a very good representation of somebody who follows the religion. Ignoring all the bits that you don't care about, and only agree and going with the bits that you agree with. So, I mean, well done. Fair play to you. You are just as religious as anybody else. Unbelievable. Yeah. Don't think for a second I wasn't empathetic when I was trying to convert you. You are the embodiment of existential despair surrounding us. One that people usually try to drown out with drugs, sex, work, Netflix. Pick your poison. All of them. Temporary copes. Empty yourself. Kill your ego. Get a routine. Join a community. Ground your morality in something tangible. Start perceiving yourself as part of something greater. 
Make sure you get up every day so that you can stream something. Get a routine down so that you know what you're doing, when you're doing it, and you don't fall into that big abyss. Yeah. All of it is good advice by itself, but codified in an appealing, otherworldly aesthetic. One that keeps the beast at bay. One you're almost fitting into. One you're almost fitting into the way you are. What's that to hate? And looking at the beast, you're going to tell us about the vampire in between? Yep. The beast. A bottomless pit of savagery and hungry. And hunger. Always under the surface, begging me to lose control. All vampires have it. Some worse than others. And it comes in many flavors. I don't know what would happen if I gave you into this urge, but somehow, I doubt I'd like it. Unbelievable. You're a goddamn lunatic. He looks to the sky. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. If you don't believe in God, why are you looking to the sky at this point? You're appealing to a higher power. Or at least you're putting on the appearance of appealing to a higher power. And if you do it so often that it becomes a core of your being, then what is the difference between you believing in it and you pretending to believe in it? And showing all of the faith and devotion that somebody who truly did believe in it does. hard headed questions here on LM, TD, TM, FFR. Sort that. Your entire ideology is just aesthetics, you fucking loon. And how exactly do I differ from anyone else nowadays in this regard? Stop arguing semantics. No, you stop. Just look at yourself. Privileged burnout or refuses to invest herself in anything. I only started committing to anything when, once in your own life, you were forced into a politically charged, dangerous task. Once it's over, we're back to being an aimless brat. You don't need to have an aim to live your life. So many of these things. Anyway, desire. Desire to murder increases! Urgh. Ever since World War II, I've been watching every person and every idea I cared about wither and disappear. That's the source of my pain. That's the reason I am what I am. Because the world changed, and you didn't. So you found a structure and routine which wouldn't change because it's been around for thousands, mm, hundreds of years in its present form. I don't know, that's healthy. The source of your pain. The thing that defines you? People have been mean to you. Fuck off. People in third world countries keep their heads high while suffering from every sort of horror, but you have a complete mental breakdown every time you remember you have mommy issues. Wow. Classy. I should be doing voices to distinguish, but I'm not. Oh, don't act like you have the moral high ground here, you obvious, say, oblivious sadist. All I'm saying is, everyone has a different framework, a different lens to view their suffering through. Yes, if there's one thing abandoning your humanity should have shown you, is that kind frameworks are not enough. Petty vendettas, childish romances, pointless power struggles, dumb gamble that's chasing a successful career. Mommy and daddy issue, sure, why not? Pain and pleasure dictate everything. Everyone wants something bigger than this. They want to escape from this drudgery. They want psychedelia, but permanent. They want to stare at God's face, even if He does not exist. And you can show them how. Accept the cross you're wearing into your heart, Julia. Accept it. Creepy fucker. Just accept it. Alright, that will be enough, Benner. The mood changes in an instant. The sight of Father Leonard takes us both aback. Father, what are you doing here so early? 
You two are arguing so loudly, I had to come out and check. Even if, with all the panic on TV these days, simply walking outside feels like marching into a war zone. Yeah, I'm sorry. You should be. I was willing to turn a blind eye to your quirks because I believe you have in your hearts your right the place, mostly. But I'm very disappointed in the way you approach folks in need. Right now, Benoit Seagull is displaying all the confidence of a scolded teacher's favourite. But I was just trying to guide her to set her on the right path. I know, Benoit. I know. That's the problem. Sacristy is a the crest is open? Please head there right now. We need to have a long talk. Get me some coffee, if you wish. But, Benoit! He slowly slinks away, looking defeated. Deflated, debased. I burn the moment into my redness, etching onto my soul, kind of hoping I'll never have to see him again. And this is how I'll always remember him. Father Leonard watches him closely until he disappears from sight, then turns to me. <sighs> I feel sorry for him. I keep hoping he might find some basic empathy through faith. But all I've done thus far is let him leave you at the end of your tether. Gee, that's some faith he has. You okay with all the bullshit he's spouting? <laughs> I don't exactly support it, but. I uh, don't reject it either. It's like attrition and contrition. Imperfect and perfect repentance, you know? One is focused on a relationship with God, the other selfish and focused on personal gain. But both of them work. Yeah, but doesn't this strike you as completely missing the point? A bit. But purely secular takes on Christ's teachings are nothing new. Pascal's Wager is a boring example. Have you read... Have you, by chance, read Balkovoy's The Master and Margarita? Margarita? Mm. No, never even heard of that. Sure, back in Poland, every teen trying to look intellectual online love to repeat that joke about the talking cat who swears he'd never pour vodka for a lady because women deserve pure alcohol. Oh, okay. Good for you. That's one takeaway from that novel, I suppose. Ari is as a moving depiction of Christ, who's not a divine being, stripped of mythic qualities, but open for transcendence. Jesus and Satan understand, understood as powerful forces battling within us. I have to read it again. It's been too long. It sounds nice, though. It sounds too close to the two wolves inside you fighting which one wins, the one that you feed crap that's going on at the moment. I stretch lazily, take out another smoke. Leonard watches me closely before speaking up again. Julia? Hmm? Four hours from now, there is going to be a meeting in the Elysium. The big finale of Celebrations of Power. Everyone will be there, but they were counting on you to not show up. Good sheriff plans to present the results of the investigation in your stead. It's a simple, crude strategy. Might work. That begs to be countered with an outrageous tactic. Take it as you will. The game is about to end. Momentarily, I'm left dumbfounded. All I can master is an eloquent I think the word is fuck. Oh, damn it. Eh? No, don't ask me. I'm just the messenger. Who relayed this message to you then? A good friend. A cautious friend. Wouldn't be able to tell you more than that, even if you forced me to. Uh, shit. I guess I need to do some work and decide on what I'm doing. This is the moment that might decide the rest of my days. What would you do in my place, Father? When I was faced with a dilemma that would shape the rest of my life, the world felt too big and scary and impossible to understand. 
So I simply escape from that choice into the seminary. I was going to say, if this doesn't end with him stepping out of life and into the seminary, then they're doing themselves a disservice. But they made it. Phew. If that's your idea of good advice, I'm going to have to ask you to shove it. I would expect nothing less. Don't you regret it? Regret what? You're kind of shady. Don't seem like a bad guy. Still, you have to accept the people above you are responsible for some horrible things. If our superiors acts count as our own th sins, on the face of it, probably half the people in the world are irredeemable. Clever, but not a real answer. And being a low-level grant for assholes, you find wholly objectionable is no way to live. I don't know. Is it? Yes. I finished the smoke in silence. I have to go. Don't know if and when we'll see each other again. But when that happens, I probably won't be the same old me. Of course. Before I leave to school, Benoit, let me say one more thing. Yeah? These are difficult times. My parishioners keep call my parishioners keep calling me. The things people are going through. I might never admit it, but if this keeps up, it will cause horrifying, invisible damage to this nation. I mean Yeah, maybe. Dreadful darkness is killing us all, little by little. And like every powerful evil, it manifests itself little by little. And yet, sinful as it may be, I confess to being strangely excited. For a moment, we're seeing this suffocating normal disappear. Is this time to dream a new world as possible? Walk these empty streets, Julia. Remember how the city feels right now. Bask in its shadows and uncertainties. After the apocalypse comes the great rebirth. The Amakin Noctus waits your next report with great curiosity. I give him a nod and sprint away. Now I know what must what I must do. Well I don't, but okay. Hey Moon, my loon, constant companion. When I moved here for good. From, you know, the old country. You were the only close friend who kept me so company. What about the sun? Never felt in the right place back there. Never felt in the right place here. Especially now, when I'm not quite alive. Not quite dead. Not that Slavic. Not that American. Maybe it's about time I finally carve out some space for myself. It's been a long road, hasn't it? Wish me luck! I catch him in front of the art hole because, of course, he has to be the first person I meet there. Yeah. No way! No, 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 no. I'm gonna be the laughing stock of the entire city if I don't show up to the resolution of my own investigation. How about you demonstrate a modicum of, curi of courtesy? Not curiosity, but courtesy. Courtesy! Girl, I should put you on trial. Can't guarantee I eventually won't. You've met with Kaiser, the eminent Greece of this city. Beat him to a pulp, like a random groom. He will do everything he can to destroy you from now on. My bet is, he'll succeed. Eh, whatever will be, will be. For now, at the very least, I'd like to show the court I'm not a baby fledgling who can't see a task she was given to the end. You're making a huge mistake. How did he even learn this meeting is happening in the first place? Maybe I'm not as trash an investigator as you thought I was. I never said, but you're showing it. That's not a fair assessment. I wanted to finish this whole mess myself. For your own good. It would be nice if you asked me what I think next time. I'm actually pissed off he tried to pull this off without me. 
Uh, but I'm not letting it show counting. But I'm not letting it show counting on being able to guilt trip him into submission. This deep sigh of resignation proves that my tactic was successful. Fine. But you will stay quiet. The whole time. No tricks, ifs, or buts. But of course. This way. We step into the maw of the gallery. Celebrations of power are almost over. Everyone is back in their usual respective styles again, looking weary of each other's company. Trapped in their own little worlds. What can we see from the art around here? Well, we've got a uh, fading spirit at least, so we're still seeing those. So our powers haven't deserted us, that's good to know. Ooh, there's a very faint painting there that we can't make anything of. You can't see my... yeah. I don't know what we've got over here. Somebody straddling something? The end of a boat? Or a or a fish taking them off to a new place? I can't tell anything from any of these. Alas. Well, let's get on and see what's there. The art hole is nearly empty now. And Kadir is uh, gently strong-arming the last remaining nobodies into leaving the premises. Eventually, only me and a select few of the New York Camarilla VIPs remain. Ah, oh, Mr. Sawinski. Barely made it, huh? The arsehole with the glued-on smile spots me first. And he's just as authentically enthused to see me as ever. So he's finally showed his face around here. I wasn't sure if you'd join us tonight. Good here made this meeting sound like a one-man show. Preparations took me a bit longer than I thought they would. I apologize. Are you, by chance, planning to surprise us with something? Well, if I was planning something, it wouldn't be a surprise if I told you now, would it? Can I have everyone's attention, please? We're about to begin. Hello! Which one's the vampire? All of them. Everybody is a vampire, except me. I am obviously not a vampire. Because you can see me on camera. That proves I'm not a vampire. If you go with the old Channel 4. Dang, what was the name of that series? Hmm, don't remember the name of the series. It was a what? It was a series of like six episodes, a season of six episodes, whatever, to do with vampires. They weren't showing. They weren't showing up on electronics at all. It was a fun little series for what it was. I would have liked more of it, but hey, probably vampires. Might have been vampires. Except they didn't use the, they never once used the term vampires in the ultraviolet. I'm pretty sure that's what it was called. Stupid brain suddenly pinging up. Not the Mila Jovich rubbishy movie. But I'm pretty sure there was a series called Ultraviolet. And yeah, they never used the term vampires at all during up throughout the whole of the six one hour episodes. It's a fun little thing. Anyway, everyone remains in the building. Everyone remaining in the building gathers around Kadir. Ah, exciting. Is everyone present? Present. And accounted for. My prince. Yes. Before we begin, let me welcome an uh, unusual guest to our fold. He gestures towards a corner from behind which emerges a silhouette that would have never, ever appeared here under normal circumstances. Mm, I mean, it's been a couple of months since I played this last and I still cannot think who this might be. I mean, possibly the human we beat up, but that doesn't make a lot of sense. So let's find out. 
the information broker human we beat up. No! Ah! It's you. Yes. Names talk. I'm the Baron of the Bronx. I was delegated here by my compatriots as an oversight authority. I'm here to observe the results of the investigation. Nothing more, nothing less. Indeed, yes, an anarch would never be here in the heart of the Camarilla. Let me stress this one last time. This is a one-time occurrence meant to alleviate the tensions in the city. Not a symbol of mutual recognition. Not in the slightest. Yeah. Politicking. I peek at Addison's face to get a feel for how a hardline loyalist might grapple with this arrangement. His expression portrays no surprise, only a slight discomfort. If even he is fine with it, the prince must have been extremely convincing about the necessity of a temporary truce, or about some Machiavellian tactics she's got ready up her sleeve. Who knows? Of course, we might have irreconcilable differences, but at times when we have to put temporarily put aside the order to quell unrest and open paths for constructive, meaningful change. If anyone would like to voice their concerns, the time is now. Talk, Arturo, and Panard exchange glances. Normally, I'd consider it an innocent gesture. Knowing what I know, I roll my eyes. A stick or a carrot talk. What made you break and sell your compatriots? How much do you really know? Hopefully, more than I do, because I can't remember it. If not, get here. May I? <laughs> oh, that was a weird sound effect. Steps into the middle of the room and clears his throat theatrically. I mean, why? why? Why would you even have that as a sound effect in this game when you're not really doing voiced people? But you did it enough to have a throaty clearing sound effect? Alright, fine, whatever. First, let me plainly state that the conclusion I'm going to present is by no means my own achievement. Is a result of tireless investigation conducted by a talented kindred I won't name here. <laughs> a telling glance in Talk's direction serves as a succinct explanation for why he refuses to call them by their names. Yep, yeah, don't want to tell the Anarchs about your sources, that's the word. And of course, Julius Lewinsky whose ceaseless groundwork over the past few nights served as foundation for the findings that are about to be revealed here. Thank you, Julia. Thank you. It's not the first time he's set out to oversell my achievements. As the Sheriff, my role here is mostly representative. I spent the last few days overseeing the celebrations in Elysium, making sure no harm would befall anyone present. Luckily, none did. Looks like the Prince's decision to move forward with the event was the correct one. Brown Noser. And for that, we should extend our thanks to Kadir, and let us not overlook our guest to a degree. I managed to convince my key allies that diplomatic action is the only way forward in this case. No matter how wrong-headed the enemy could be, we still need avenues to negotiate and communicate. I'm curious how Tamika would react to him looking like a corporate bastard designed at uh, designing the future order. There's missing potential for a change that lies in all the rest. No wonder she dumped him. Yeah. The Anarch who decided that the Baron Anarch was not being anarchic enough and was too pushing for order. Spare us the empty pleasantries and let Kadir move on. I don't have all night for this. It was one of your people who died, wasn't it? Oh no, it was... We lost the Baron. We lost the Baron... I... Yeah. Yes, we lost the Baron of New York. And it was one of your people who was on the list of names that the Baron had on him when they died. Yeah. Right. 
I will be concise. Douglas, boss, Callahan's remains were found in his office by one of his ghouls first thing in the evening. The most hindered to confirm it was another Anna Baron talk present here. A mystery book author would refer to the circumstances of Callahan's death as a classic closed room mystery. The narrow door, locked from the inside, served as the sole way in. There was no murder weapon, no useful testimonies, and the evidence was, how do I put it, barely circumstantial at best. What was left for us was one hell of a puzzle. One where the answer couldn't even be approached using the tried and tested question, Qui bono? Who profits? All the way back to, um, I want to say Daedalus, but that's the mythical guy who's not in his name. Oh my god, famous Roman lawyer, for want of a better term there. Marcus. Oh, ah. This is going to frustrate me that I can't remember the name of the guy. Gets with the C. I know, if I just had... Ah. Uh, let's go on. We were presented with a poorly timed power upheaval, a tense situation where a long planned celebration was in danger. Suddenly, all of us were faced with an uncertain future. Everybody benefited. Nobody did. No one was especially fond of Callahan. But it's not like anyone seemed particularly keen on removing him from the equation, especially at this time. For a moment, we were sure this was the beginning of an offensive on the part of the Camarilla. We started wondering just how violent our retaliation should be. Oh, let's talk, speaking. No wonder he said on behalf of the Camarilla. And as for us, we were momentarily convinced that the Anarchs were plotting to blame us for their own internal power struggles. Tense situation resolved only thanks to skillful and swift diplomacy. Dare I say? Yet another victory for our talented prince. My god, you really are brown nosing, aren't you, Thomas? Julia made sure to examine all the contacts Callahan I've had in his last days. In both sex, her efforts were tireless. And only rarely misguided. He just had to spit out at least one biting remark, didn't he? Ah, well, he's probably just covering his ass. But as exhausted as they might have been, only served to muddle the possibilities, not explain them. Callahan had a lot of enemies, but they were the most infuriating kind of enemies one can have. Folks who barely even thought of him ever anymore. In other words, no one really had a particular interest in getting rid of him, because they could always simply work their way around him. Just before last Christmas, he even witnessed the first ever successful first light raid against his extremely profitable blood trade supply lines. Lone ace up his sleeve, a downright shady ability to perfectly maneuver around all SI activities, gone. Callahan's decline was apparent to all, and a domino effect made his empire slowly crumble. Up until recently, he'd done an admirable job keeping up with the times and getting away with murder. And suddenly, all of the prison spotlights were on him. Recent stories we hear about him all depict a depressed, downright manic recluse, lashing out at everyone, struggling and utterly failing to fit in with the new reality he found himself in. A closed room. No evidence of a struggle. A lack of strong white on it. The corpse being found in the very early evening hours, the conclusion is simple. Callahan's final death was self-inflicted. Suicide, to put it in simple terms. Well, Quiddy, you are coming to... Not an erroneous conclusion, because I guess you're saying it for a reason. But it is... 
wrong. Ha! Huh. Silence has filled the room. Hmm. Talk is not in this picture anywhere. I wonder if he's an optional person then who might not be here and it might be somebody else. That's why they haven't got him in this setting. So they don't have to change out the limited backgrounds that they have here. So, uh, wow! That really is the angle we'll be pushing, isn't it? Let's hear it, Sheriff. Come on, Kadir, tell us. I will explain. It was an independent detective who first set me on this theory. Only last night. There is no suicide note, of course. But the messages I recently departed have sent might not have necessarily been a verbal one. The peculiar thing was the position of the body. It was like an arrow pointing at pointing at us to notice something. Alright, odd phrasing. It appears the last thing Callahan saw in his unlife was a portrait of one Lord Castlereagh. Second Marquis of Londonderry, which is coincidentally where Callahan was born. Um, but you can't tell where he was looking. To most, he was a reviled traitor, a heartless suppressor of all dissent, the main threat against each rebellion of the Irish. Have gone though. Against each rebellion of the Irish, have gone though. Uh, no, no, no. The main threat against each rebellion the Irish have gone through. Successful in all ways, but those that mattered to his people. Yeah, he had, and when he died, Castle Ray. Here, it was. Oh God. Byron. Byron, who wrote a poem for his obituary. It was a scathing one. Um. It's very short and sweet. It's something akin to, maybe not word for word exactly, but hairline the bones of Castle Ray, stop traveller and piss. It, very short, very pithy, like that. Not certain those are the exact words, but that's it. Some call him a tragic figure, holding together selfish allies. Uh, uh, self. Uh. <sighs> Some call him a tragic figure, holding together selfish allies against a common threat, always fighting for painful and unpopular compromises, ruined by overwork, sickness, and poor public speaking skills. Not hard to see why Douglas Callahan would emphasize. Polite echoes all around. Need, especially when you realize that the sickness in his blood, his failures, the hatred from his own people, and a growing paranoia led him to commit a dramatic suicide within his own four walls. Yeah, I see. The assumption is, instead of stabbing himself to death with a knife or a pen, he decided to let the sun embrace him in its warmth. Castle Ray's face burning into his eyes. A poetic final death. It's not a closure we might have wondered, but probably the best explanation of his motivation that we're going to get. Does everyone follow? A heavy silence fills the room. Nobody speaks up, except Prince Panhard. To me, it's all perfectly understandable. Agreeable. And most importantly, it fits the man I've come to us understand over the last two decades. Consistent murmuring resonates through the room. A consentient? I don't know that word. I presume it means ones that agree. Talk is saying. Agreed. And might I add, there were some irregularities in the handling of the crime scene, but the Anarch leader's findings suggest Callahan's resentful ghouls were to blame. Folks have been real happy to see him dead, is all I'm saying. And they went overboard with the celebrations. They've all been interrogated, though. Yes, I have received all the resulting intel. 
and has done nothing to change my mind. No depiction of Callahan's state of mind only served to support the suicide theory. It's my suggestion that we all announce these findings to our respective communities first thing tomorrow night. Sounds reasonable. And I think that concludes this meeting. I'll let the Keeper of the Elysium do the honours. No time wasted, huh? Alright. Does anyone have anything to add? Any questions to ask? Take your time. Yeah, I suspect you are the friend who told us that this meeting was going on there, Catherine. Owner of the uh, art hold. Silence. I look at everyone just sitting it out in perfect agreement. Congrats, everyone. Congrats us. We've achieved a perfect victory. No loose ends. No rocking the boat. No nothing. Makes you want to puke. How many of them contributed to this final report? How strongly does Kadir believe the shit running from his mouth? He's always been a Camarilla loyalist. A fanatic, even. But... Miss Julia, any final statements? This is it. Now or never. If anyone can blow this patriotic, pathetic charade wide open, it's me. But there's no coming back from this road, and it has a cost. I spent all of my life, and on life, on social climbing, and the sunken cost fallacy is kicking in. Challenging them here might be the only way I'll ever make it out of the pit I'm in. On the other hand, Maybe this is my time to head into the unknown. Kill my ego, at least. Temporarily. Shut up. The voice of my error screaming inside my head. Betray my la sombra instincts. Thank you all these ghosts go away and figure out something new, no matter how scary it might be. Do I dare? Or maybe I don't. I feel like there's an incredible prize to be won waiting right in front of me. Do I just dare to take out this revolver with a single bullet I have hidden on me? And invite everyone for a crazy game of Russian Roulette. But I also get this for burning gangster movie feeling. Like, this is the scene where the future mobster could have gotten out, but he didn't. In the end, did Callahan think all the splendor of the golden era is worth his pathetic end? It's like there are two selves battling for dominance inside of me. One of them has to die, the other gets to live. Honestly? To flip of the coin. I reflect on all the kindred I've met, lessons I've learned, choices I've made over these past few nights, to make a decision. And then, feeling like I'm simply following the way I conducted this investigation to its logical conclusion, I respond. Hmm, so is this going to be a choice, or is this going to be based on the traits that I have made over the course of the game? Let's find out. Actually, I do. All right, okay. It's like the beast itself flashed in Kinnear's eyes for a brief moment. No, you don't. But I do. Miss Sawinski. Don't make a scene. Believe me, every one of you will really, really, really regret it if I don't listen to what I have to say. Will we now? Oh, absolutely. I stand up to step right in front of Kadir. Don't get me wrong. Kadir has done a spectacular job of selling you a ready-made narrative to package. Thanks for to the outside well. I owe to the sheriff and all that. But was this little show really necessary? Did you all really need to hype each other up to believe this fairy tale? What are you getting at, little girl? Easy for now, my prince. It's not all you want. It's only going to make it all the sweeter when this little girl kicks your ass. I'm getting at the fact that there's a different, more reasonable theory that explains everything. Everything to a T. It's great for you, sweetheart. But do I really need to stay here and listen to it? door is right there, but on the uh, the off chance that you get implicated in something tonight, don't you want the chance to defend yourself? What are the 
the chances of me being implicated in anything tonight. I'm pretty sure a lot of kindred in this room are asking themselves the same question right now. In each case, my answer is the same. You won't find out unless you stay right where you are. She stays. All right, where was I? Uh, let's assume that the cause of the boss's Callahan of Boss Callahan's death really was suicide. I said, "Oh fuck everything! Open the window shutters. Let the break of dawn take care of all his problems." And let's assume that he really meant to send a message using that portrait of Lord Castlereagh. Sounds dramatic, but sure, let's go with it. And it is commonly understood that Castle Ray was pushed into taking his own life as a result of a conspiracy against him. Needless to say, his biggest fan wouldn't miss that detail. According to historians, the man's last, way, last words imply that some powerful people faced him with a choice. Denunciation or death. Which, for an ambitious politician, is not a choice at all. So if you're claiming that Castle Ray left us a hint, it's a troubling hint, don't you think? What are you? Enough! We're not dealing in conspiracy theories here. Of course, you're not. I mean, a conspiracy theory backed by the elites is no longer court search. It's propaganda. Is there a point to this little show you're putting on, Mr. Winsky? Other than digging yourself deeper and deeper metaphorical hole. Oh, Mr. Arturo, you're still trying to tell yourself it's me who's in trouble, not you. That's adorable. Listen, you. No, you listen. He freezes in shock. Definitely not used to resistance. I don't blame you for peddling propaganda. You're politicians. That's what you do. Just laughing at you for coming up with a shitty, poorly conceived propaganda. So, um, will somebody stop her, or...? Mr. Addison Payne, you know the architect behind the local Camarilla's current speeches and general political narrative. Be honest, does this shit show really meet your standards? We stare into each other's eyes, unblinking, slowly feeling each other out. Eventually, with a barely audible snigger, he whispers to his servant. How do I put this? I'm always open to a better pitch. That's all I wanted to hear. All I'm asking for now is a little patience. That I can spare. Oh, for goodness sake, Edison. Come on, man. You can't possibly... Silence! I said what I said. Now let her talk. Thank you. I'm starting to have fun with this. Or oh, more like, I'm feeling that weird rush reminding me of the first time I managed to ride a bike. The important thing is to keep up with the momentum. Focus on pedaling hard. Don't ever think of falling. You thought you had it all figured out, didn't you? And it probably handled murder scene? A disposable investigator forced to blindly stumble around, hopelessly chasing loose ends? Your only problem is that, tonight, I realized I was using the wrong tools all along. Instead of a sleuth magnifying glass, I only needed a journalist's pen. So I sat down tonight and wrote my first article in almost a year. Two hours of ceaseless writing, creative juices flowing the entire time, everything miraculously falling into place. And frankly, I think it's my masterpiece. I get carried away and jump on one of the benches. Oh. Uh, nope, still no talk here. Just all the Camarilla. You want to hear the contents? I know you're all dying to hear the contents. So, okay, let's hear the contents. I mean, I'd rather hear the index myself, but hey. Hazel Stowbridge, high region of the Chantry of Five Arrows, violently splitting, splitting with their student after he discovers her plans for horrifically exper experiments with blood magic. Her target, Baron Callahan. Said student, conveniently missing. We've got an exclusive source too. Agathor, the Warlock's person, ah, 
Agatha won the Warlock's personal diary. Extra, extra, read all about it. She's trying to hide that she's nervous, but she's practically shaking. I should be the one checking. Uh, pacing together what little solid or relatively solid intel I have. Bring it together into something coherent with educated assumptions and pure conjecture. But at least I'm fairly sure she recognizes me as a threat now. Just what I was hoping for. Next up, is it true that Talk, the brave Baron, Anarch Baron, primed to be the next de facto leader of the sect in New York City, might have been manipulating his entire faction to secure the position? This appeasement candidate convinced his key allies that the revolution is not an option at the moment, appearing as a reasonable alternative to his bloodthirsty rivals. His ace in the hole was a strangely efficient ability to establish diplomatic channels with the Camarilla, which he then used to gain a series of small concessions from the New York City court. Could it be that Prince Bernard, having realised that our longtime collaborator Baron Callahan was just an undesirable asset, found a different, more 2020 candidate to be the leader of the Anarchs? Extra, extra, read all about it. This one's not shaking. She's just angry. And this one just seems confused. What about the fact that Talk, Helena Panhard's... What about the fact that Talk, Helena Panhard, Thomas Artura, Cora Van, Van der Weigen, and uh, Hazling Sturbridge were all summoned to Callahan's night? Callahan's office right before his death. Could it be that a so-called boss employed some final desperate measures to stop his downward spiral into irrelevance, at which point Rash Bland to bring on his demise was executed? Could it be that Kaiser, the legendary New York City info broker, was racking deals left and right with both the Camarilla and the Anox, wiretap Callahan's office to eavesdrop on those negotiations? Extra, extra. Read all about it. You could cut the atmosphere here with a knife. And it's only getting worse. For them, at least, I feel better than I've ever felt in years. And the fact nobody is protesting probably means I'm hitting the nail on the head. Could it be that for the entire 21st century, the conflict between the New York City Camarilla and Anox was a sham? What if the Second Inquisition's operations in the city were consulted with the leaders of the two sects? How deep did the rot of corruption go? What about Sophia Langley's disappearance? Attempts on the unlives of would-be members of a coterie she attempted to set up alongside her ward last year. Could all of those things be connected? And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Or a tip of the iceberg, really? Alright. Stay tuned, dear readers. Heavy silence befalls the room. When it comes to overbearing, Kadir breaks it by hawking loudly. His poker face is indecipherable. And where Prajil can one read all about it tomorrow? Ten different places. Among them, of course, a report received by uh, Glenn the Sombro's elders in Chicago. Constantly mixing truth with lies. I do know some facts. I did write something. But all in all, it's a confidence, Chris. Plain and simple. Have you sent it out already? No. Father Leonard is not the channel I used to reach Chicago. In case you were wondering, took every possible precaution the way you guys taught me. No, this hurts him. I can't show a single weakness right now. Oh, this is ridiculous. She's probably bluffing. No. She knows Thomas. How can you be certain? I just am. That prior diary probably just saved my ass. Thank you, Agatha One, I guess. Yeah, and that was one of the things I could have missed, I believe. Even if I was bluffing. It's all about optics. You nominate a special investigator, then the moment she presents her findings, you do what? Subjugate her? Get rid of her? How do you get out of this? I get it. You gave me that role, that title, because you were counting on me remaining the same shitty, useless nobody I was ever since I started working with the court. Funny how that works, isn't it? 
a week ago, nobody would have given a shit about what I have to say. Now I'm a grave threat to this entire Illuminati New World Order arrangement you've got going on. I still maintain you can't possibly know and prove all of the claims you've left is listed. There's no way. I know. I checked. First off, stop bullshitting. You don't know that for sure. Second, even if you're right. So what? I've got leverage now. Because of my journalistic past, you gave me a detective's title that wasn't worth a rat's ass in doing detective work. But ironically, it gave me the opportunity to do the best reporting I've ever done. And it doesn't even matter if it contains more facts than your official narrative. And you know why? Because the story I offer makes infinitely more sense, morally, emotionally, metaphysically, whatever you name it. It's a far hotter commodity than the low rent bullshit you peddle. Well, there we go. I mean, this is uh, fake news, isn't it? What's that saying? Uh, lies can gallop halfway around the world while the truth is still putting its shoes on? Something like that? People will far more readily believe an entertaining lie than they will a boring truth. People nowadays buy into barely coherent crap like 5G and QAnon. Once they get a hold of my perfectly logical story and see you don't really have anything to counter it, you'll be fucked. Hell, the very fact none of you have denied any of my allegations yet speaks volumes, doesn't it? I mean, no. I guess they were questioning the... that they have... you have the facts rather than questioning the narrative, so yeah. That's a thing that I have learned. A guilty person will question the facts of things, whereas an innocent person will usually just be too bamboozled and flustered to bother to question anything. Which is an interesting thing. But hey. Oh, Tom Sotoro has nothing to say. But the prince is absolutely furious that she's not in charge, visibly scrambling to figure out some counter-offensive. Why would anybody listen to you? You made that story of yours sound completely unrespectable, like tabloid garbage. Tabloid would be fine. Just means it would reach more folks. What? What do you want? Now we're talking. Prime gym position for Clan La Sombra. And a number of privileges befitting the title. We can negotiate the details, but a nice apartment in downtown Manhattan is a must. Dreaming big, are we? What could you even bring us to the fold? What could you even bring to the fold as Primogen? <sighs> I turn away from her to speak to the manager. Mr. Payne? Yes. As you can see, we've all found ourselves in quite a mess here. Indeed, to say the least. Yeah, find us a way out. Will you form a professional relationship with me and back the decision to make me primogen? The figure in the wheelchair lets out a sarcastic laugh, sounding like the final wheeze of a dying man. You really are swinging over the fences, aren't you, child? I'm not suicidal, most of the time at least. I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't have my sights set sky high. I understand. How do you propose we solve this little predicament? Easy. We give the masses an even better story than the one I just suggested. One that benefits nearly all the parties in this room. Alright then. Thanks to your moxie, you've secured yourself my tentative support, child. Let's hear it. Thank you very much. Okay then. Who are we going to throw to the wolves? During my investigation, I covered some interesting intrigue about a certain individual. Praise be to Kaiser's abandoned limousine. Said individual would definitely prefer his behind-the-scenes dealings to remain unknown. For the last 20 years, he's been an on-and-off mediator between the different parties in this city. He prides himself on his diplomatic skills. 
Interestingly enough, though, one of his main motivators was selling intel about both the Camarilla and the Anarchs to any party that might be interested. Usually, that meant Kaiser. Oh, is this our Malkavian friend? With a reasonable degree of certainty, he can be held responsible for a few recent failed Camarilla operations that we can lay in Panhard's position. He dreams of being a prince, you see. I can already see him awkwardly shifting his weight. Recently, he obtained control over an IT company called Double Spiral, which he used to influence New York City kind in ways that further his agenda, weaken his political enemies. Indeed, this is the Malkavian. He also operates the most powerful law firm in the city. He uses both of these tools so that he can manipulate the mortals to slowly tie a noose around Anarch leaders and court members he wants gone. I'm talking, of course, about... Kaiser van der Weeden. Indeed. That is... That's a, uh, a good one to tie it onto. Yeah, I can see that. In a split second, all eyes in the room are set on him. Eh. 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 People. Whatever she throws at me, I'm sure I can explain. I throw a file I recovered from Kaiser's limo at the bench. Are you sure? Because there's a hell of a lot to explain. Addison Servants picks up the file so that his master can browse through it. If that's not enough, I'm sure Double Spiral will be happy to deliver us more. So all of the things you said the other night were a steaming pile of bullshit, Carter. Addison, we, we are friends. There's a, there's a good explanation for every single thing that's listed there. I swear, on my father's grave. Even if there is, that you can justify allowing a girl who's little more than a fledgling ripping your credibility to shreds in a matter of seconds. You've proven yourself as something infinitely worse than a traitor, Carter. You're a weak traitor. I would have said useless. Thomas? Helena? Don't you ever dare speak to me. Don't you even dare speak to me. You bastard. That was my last element of my strategy. I won't throw any curveballs my way because from now on, it's all pure improvisation. Just two minutes ago, I was the number one enemy of everyone in this room. Now I'm their unexpected ally. Really a common foe that some people in the room have wanted to nail since... forever? All I'm saying is, we've got ourselves a perfect scapegoat to pin everything on. Shady dealings between both sex, all of the real conspiracies it was involved in, possibly perfect looks and history. The schadenfreude accompanying his fall will be enough to keep some kindred in this city happy for years. Oh, so good. It shoots me a demented look, one I assume is typically reserved for a future strangling victim. You, you, you can't do this to me. Why is that? You. Ah. Uh, you are, you are, you are... Incompetent. Wow. That's the best you can do. Seriously? Kadir. Yes, my prince. Seize him. No, no, I beg you, just no! You can come with me without struggle, or in talk war. As usual, it's three strikes with me, then you're gone. No, 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 for a good minute, everybody just stands there, confused. Then Addison begins to clap. Bravo, Miss P Ah, bravo, Miss Sawinski. Haven't seen such an adventurous power play in years. Maybe your generation is not all lost after all. Does that mean I can count on your support? Of course. As far as I'm concerned, you're the kind of ruthless primogen this city needs. Especially now. Well, one suit will probably 
be made vacant. So, uh, what do you say, my prince? And I recoils a little when she hears me refer to her in such an official manner. My relationship with Edison is a decades-long conflict, and by now I know which hills I'm willing to die on. This is not one of them. Rejoice, girl. You're going to get what you want, as well as deserve. Oh, we should have one important condition, though. Of course you do. Mr. Payne, as I'm sure you'll agree, being primogen is an important representative position. Now it's nothing but a display of impeccable respect for the masquerade and the traditions. Of course. It's my concern that it wouldn't be proper for us to be represented by someone who openly violates the rules of kindred society. What rules? Are we talking about my live-in cool partner person? Because I've recently found out she's just using me. So if she's the sacrifice that has to be made, I've got no problems with that. But of course, that wouldn't do at all. They have to be openly renounced their old ways at the very least. Indeed. I think in the case of Mr. Sawinski, who has lived with a mortal under a single roof for a long time, the best course of action would be to renounce her, give her up to the, our sheriff. That kind of gesture would prove the new primogen's dedication to the court, beyond any reasonable doubt. Hmm. Yes. Yes, I definitely agree. Her ambition and pride are admirable, but it would be prudent for uh, it would be prudent of us to demand a display of humility as well. Sadistic fox. My thoughts exactly. Well then, your answer, miss? <laughs> So funny, Mr. Winsky. See it in your eyes that you're a you naive fool. You think you've gotten so goddamn clever. Think I would have gotten this far if I didn't think it all through? Oh, have you run already? There's only one response. I agree. Do what you must. He's speechless. He thought you had me pinned. And I simply responded with a checkmate. I guess that solves our problem then. Let's head out for now. It's been an exhausting evening, and dawn is nearing. Yes, let's do that. Walks Payne out, looking unstrung and defeated. Soon after, Kadir was ordered to take care of Dakota. Ask me if I want to know what was done to her. I don't think anybody would care enough to put up our posters. My reply was honest. Not really interested, no. He said that I'd gotten myself into a terrible game, the rules of which defied comprehension. I replied that if I'm winning and climbing upwards, I must be doing something, right? Still, I don't talk too much these days beyond professional interactions. I have a much bigger world to think about now. One that oh, fills me with happiness. Come to think of it, my current state reminds me of those few halcyon days right after my embrace. It might not last, but at this point I have to ask myself, what does? It's always about the next bigger rush. I'm writing speeches and official communications for the New York City Camarilla these days, helping out pain from time to time too. Finally, I've never felt more accomplished. More fulfilled as a journalist than I am right now. Karen is visiting for a few days. Uh, Karen is visiting in a few days to congratulate me on behalf of the entire Chicago-based clan. Apparently, I've not only met her expectations but exceeded them. She keeps bragging to everyone about how great her eye was in picking me. It's only. It's only these shadows that keep getting to me. I notice them everywhere these nights, and there are more and more of them surrounding me as time goes on. But it doesn't matter. I like to think they are being cast because my future looks so bright. And uh, I got the achievement there, if you didn't see that pop up, which I doubt you did, that just said, good ending. Well, there we go. Yes, we have the good ending. 
And there we are. Well, I mean, that took us... We started this back in October for Halloween, spooky, scary month, and it's taken us a lot longer because, I mean, we only do this twice a week, Sundays and, uh, and Tuesdays, and I missed a hell of a lot in between there because of internet problems and Christmas or holiday-related things going on there. So, yeah, this has taken a lot longer than I thought it was, but, you know, it's been moderately enjoyable. Um, I'm not certain I would go back and... I might replay it just once, just to see what alternate choices actually get you, because, I mean, there wasn't any choices today from what you saw. I just clicked through. I didn't pick anything. So everything I had done in the previous episodes must have been what happened there. Yeah, but yeah. The cast and crew of Critical Role? Why were they being thanked in this? What did I miss there? Meh. Never mind. And there we are, back on the beginning. And, uh, I mean, it's only been an hour and a half, but I haven't got anything more planned for today. I haven't got the next point and click lined up yet. I have many different ones to pick from, and we'll have those for Tuesday. Oh, let me go to a different screen. Hey, eh? let's go to the ending screen. Ah, vampire. Vampire, go away, don't eat me yet, etc. Hilarious. But yes. So, Tuesday we will be doing a new point and click game on point and click Tuesday. What will it be? We'll have to wait and find out because even I don't know just yet. I have many lined up, as I said, but nothing in particular. Well, uh, I am going to quickly look something up so that I can edit, so I can just say it. Right. No, not you. Cicero. Cicero. That was the name of Queenie Bono. That was the name of the person. There we go. Ah, that information right there at my fingertips, and I just didn't have it. I didn't even need to Google it, because I had stuff on my hard drive that I knew would say it. Still, there we go. Alright, going to mute you in the background there. And you can only hear my voice as I say thank you so very much for being here. I do appreciate each and every one of you, whether live and in person or later on on the VOD, coming here and watching this. You amazing people. Why, why would you come and watch me play video games badly? Mm -hmm. But you do. And as I say, I appreciate you for it. Uh, I will be back tomorrow. Tomorrow will probably be more Mass Effect Andromeda as we continue on with that. That will be fun. Um, yeah, that's where we'll be. Um, if not, I don't think I'm going to start another another new game because we've still got quite a few. If it's not that, then it will be uh, Guardians of the Galaxy because that is one that we still haven't finished either and I'd like to see how that progresses with its surprisingly sweet storyline yeah still but until the next time I have been Richard and this whole thing has been LMTDTMFFR or set with me now limited time offer no fails and you you all have fun <laughs>